Dark Souls, the franchise for true gamers. If you have never finished a Dark Souls game before, you are scientifically proven to be a beta dweeb. Science has shown that people who haven't completed a Dark Souls game before have a 99% chance of their romantic partners leaving them. That is of course for those who can even manage to get a romantic partner in the first place. And you can fact check me on that. Now, if you haven't completed a Dark Souls game yet, well, I was once a gamer like you. Until I got a great deal on Steam, I couldn't refuse. So I bought Dark Souls 3 and played it for an hour and a half. And I absolutely hated it. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty stupid game. I didn't get it and I quit. You see, I reached the first boss and he was not easy. Well, at least back then he wasn't. So after spending all that time fighting and losing, I had enough. But there was a voice in the back of my head. A voice whispering something to me that motivated me to give it another try. That voice simply said, lol you suck, couldn't even beat first boss, loser. And my goodness that motivated me to jump back in. But this time, I had a different strategy. I was going to learn the boss fight's attacks, study them, and be more patient. And so, I beat him, and that was the moment I finally got it. So, yeah, that was my introduction to the Souls series. And I thought, you know what, I want to go back to Dark Souls 3, the game that started it all for me, and see if it is still worth playing in the year 2024. If you have ever played a Souls-like game, you would know that these game stories are very hands-off. It doesn't blatantly tell you what it is about, it gives you the basic details and that's about it. In the case of Dark Souls 3, you are some loser called the Ashen One and you are not unique or special in any way. There have been many that came before you and many that have failed. Your goal is to fight the Lords of Cinder and, and retrieve them to their thrones. Doing this will then allow you to fight the Swedish death metal album cover that is the final boss. Your final objective after defeating him is to make one of three choices that will determine the fate of the Dark Souls 3 world. And well, that's basically the extent of what the game tells you, that's all you really get. Now despite the very little information you get regarding the Dark Souls 3 story, the game really shines when it comes to its lore. If you have played any of the Dark Souls games before, you would know that these games are very lore rich. It's so lore rich that they are literally YouTubers that make hour long videos about one simple item. You see where most games would tell their story through, well, cutscenes and basically just having characters exchange dialogue throughout the game. The Dark Souls games almost exclusively tell their story through world building, which is very unique and it works really well with these games. You see, every enemy, every area, almost all of it has an explanation, it has a reason for being there and helps it to feel as unique as it is. This is of course not to say that this game doesn't have NPCs, because you can come across quite a few of them. However, these NPCs don't feel like they are part of your story. They feel more like they are part of their own. They're on their own journey, their own adventure. Now these NPCs have some dialogue and some of them will give you some side quests. Now a lot of the dialogue from these NPCs doesn't feel like it is adding exposition to an overarching narrative. Rather, it feels more like it is expanding upon the lore of the world. There are many other games that have great world building as well, but the way Dark Souls does it is just so unique. And focusing on less traditional storytelling allows the game to focus on its key component, that of course being the Firekeeper's Bajongus. Ok, no, it's the gameplay, but we'll get into that in just a minute. Yes, the story is very basic and very hands off, but again, I think it works well with this game. But the extensive lore more than makes up for it, and helps to make the world feel as unique as it is. When it comes to the graphics and the environments, the game is 
pretty decent in this department as well. Starting off with the environments, the environments are very beautiful. Sure, this game looks like Disneyland if it was in hell, or how Disneyland would look in 10 years when they threw in all their franchises, but it has a certain charm to it. And of course, the beautiful environments contribute to the great world building this game has, and I don't think the world building would be the same without these environments. But I have to give credit to just how different and diverse these environments look from one another. Almost each level you go through looks unique, and you can just tell that there was so much effort put into crafting these environments. From a visual standpoint, the game is a little bit lacking. I think this game has that uh, desaturated look to it where the colors just look a little bit faded. I don't think it's really that big of a problem, I don't think there's too many people that would mind it, but I just think it looks a little bit dull, it's more of a personal complaint rather than an overall negative. Now the graphics itself don't look that great either, this is not that big of a complaint to me, I'm not somebody really concerned about the graphics, more concerned about the visual presentation, but I know there are a lot of people that want their games to look as good as it possibly can, and unfortunately this game just doesn't. This is very evident when you look at certain models, as the textures would just be a little bit low poly and it causes things like character models and models of certain objects that just look a little bit, uh, well, underwhelming. From a visual standpoint, I think the game still looks good. The environments are presented in a very unique way, and the visual presentation of it is fantastic, but from a graphical point of view, the game is a little bit underwhelming, and I certainly understand why some people would be annoyed by it. The levels are amazing, I really love the Dark Souls level design, however I will admit that Dark Souls 3 is probably not as good as Dark Souls 1 when it comes to its level design. There were so many of Dark Souls 1's levels that were connected, you can go through so many levels, spending hours in the game, to then just find a random elevator that would take you back to the Firelink Shrine. That was very unique and super cool, and it made it feel like the game was just one big level. Dark Souls 3 has similar level design, just on a much smaller scale. You can still find shortcuts in this game. However, instead of leading you to an area you were at early on in the game, it would lead you back to a spot you were at earlier in the level. Now just because the levels aren't as great as it was in Dark Souls 1, it's still pretty darn good. One important factor these levels have to get right is of course the enemy placement. The enemy placement in Dark Souls 2 for me was not that great, especially when it came to the Scholar of the First Sun edition. When these games get the enemy placement wrong, it can feel like the game is a little bit unfair, or feel like the game is too easy. Therefore, it must have a proper balance of where the enemies are placed, and I think Dark Souls 3 did a great job with that. And I also have to mention that these levels are filled with enemies, and it just never gets boring. Combine that with a bunch of items you can find, and that very important items will generally be hidden behind stronger and more threatening enemies, which I think contributes to the great level design. Now when it comes to the bonfire placement, I think this game absolutely missed the mark. Now there are much more bonfires you can find within the levels of Dark Souls 3, much more than there was in Dark Souls 1. But the placements of these bonfires are just very random at times, and some of them don't really make that much sense. So a good thing I like about this game's bonfire placements is the fact that there are a lot more bonfires more closely placed to boss fight arenas. I think this is a positive. I know there are some absolute psychos out there that defend the long runbacks that Dark Souls 1 had to the boss fight arenas. Despite the fact that I think most of those people defending it probably just run past the enemies anyway, so what on earth is the point? And I definitely think that Dark Souls 3 bonfire placements could be way better, 
and he definitely could have used up something like the stakes in Elden Ring that will just spawn you outside of the boss fight arena which is so much better. I definitely think it's way better than it was in Dark Souls 1. However, my biggest problem with the bonfires, like I said, is just how random and pointless some of them are. Some levels have way too many bonfires in them. You barely reach one and there's another one just a few steps away, for some reason. A perfect example of this is when you defeat the Dragon Slayer armor and you get a bonfire in his arena. But then, literally less than 10 seconds away, there's another bonfire before you enter Hogwarts. Another complaint I have regarding the bonfires is that you cannot level up at the bonfires, which is very stupid. Instead, you have to go back to the Firelink Shrine every time you need to level up. Again, this doesn't make the game more challenging, it just makes it more frustrating. And challenge is acceptable, but frustration is just plain annoying. Now, despite some of these slight annoyances, I think the levels are still absolutely great. Which is why, even though I think it's not as great as it is in Dark Souls 1, the levels of Dark Souls 3 are still fantastic. The combat in this game is relatively simplistic, but it's still pretty good. You have a light attack and you have a heavy attack. You also have a special move and some weapons allow you to hold down the button of the special move and then either use your heavy or light attack to create a unique special attack. Throughout the course of the game, you do not unlock more moves or more abilities, you are pretty much stuck with those. So why exactly is the combat good? Well, a big contribution to the combat feeling as good as it is, is down to the game's challenge. You simply cannot talk about a Dark Souls game without talking about the difficulty, because these games are pretty much known for that. Most of the people that don't get Souls-like games think that the majority of the fanbase are the type of people that like to get punched in their baby maker, but that is not really the case. You see, I am not really somebody that likes playing every game on the hardest difficulty. Actually, most games I play, I play on the normal mode. So why exactly do I like the difficulty in the Souls-like games? That mostly comes down to the game being very balanced. And yeah, I know what you're thinking. This game isn't always fair. And yes, I'm not that delusional to say that these games are always fair because there are some absolute BS moments and some moments where the enemies are purposefully placed to absolutely shaft you. However, those moments are few and far between. For the majority of the game, everything is perfectly balanced. Regular enemies take a few hits to kill, but they can also kill you in a few hits. The game has rules, like the enemies having certain movesets, movesets that can be learned. And once you have learned them, it will make fighting these enemies much easier. A lot of other games hard modes aren't even really that hard. Take something like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, where on the hardest mode, the game isn't really that challenging, it's just the fact that a lot of the enemies have a way bigger health bar than they should, making the game more of a frustrating mess rather than an actual challenge. Almost all of that is avoided in the Dark Souls games. And well, all of this comes together to give the game a pretty balanced combat system that is challenging but fair. However, there are many other elements about the gameplay that is great. For example, the enemy variety. FromSoft is king when it comes to enemy variety. All of their games have so many different types of enemies within them. But more importantly, they are almost all unique. They all have unique moves and unique abilities. And yes, of course there are some reskins, however a lot of these reskinned enemies will appear in levels that already has new unique enemies. This helps the combat stay fresh throughout the game, and makes the very basic combat system feel way less noticeable. After all, if you have enemies that have cool unique moves, I don't really care that I don't have a move that can turn me into a fidget spinner. I've said this before and I will say it again. Having a game that has a great enemy variety gives the combat way more depth. The same can be said for playstyles. This game has a very simplistic level system. 
However, it allows you to create many different builds that are unique and very cool. Not only do these different builds allow you to play in different ways, but it also gives the game much more replay value. Of course, to help out with these different playstyles and builds, you also have a wide variety of weapons and other accessories. This game has some very cool weapons, and yes, they aren't as cool as the weapons in Elden Ring, but they are still pretty decent. The accessories you can find all contribute to a specific stat. These will help you to pump out the build you are going for. The armors you can find are pretty cool as well, giving you that distinct Dark Souls drip. The weapons can also be upgraded with a pretty simplistic upgrade system. The only cool thing to highlight is that you can use certain materials that will allow you to give your weapon a specific element like fire or ice. Even though I am pretty sure nobody really uses this feature at all. But it was still a cool idea nonetheless. Finally, there are the boss fights. The Dark Souls games are pretty well known for their boss fights. Because, well, these mofos are pretty cool. Now I don't think that Dark Souls 3 has the greatest boss fights in the series. The game has a lot of gimmick boss fights. And yes, some of them are cool, like the Abyss Watchers. However, you also have Yom the Giant and that stupid skeleton. I don't even remember his name. But he kind of sucks. Thing is, I'm not saying that the boss fights are bad. There are a lot of fantastic boss fights in this game. And the fantastic boss fights outweigh the terrible boss fights. But I do think there are a bit too many mid to terrible boss fights in this game. Which wasn't exactly the case in Dark Souls 1 or in Bloodborne or Elden Ring. So there's that. I think looking at the gameplay of this game, there is a lot of improvement from the games that came before it. There is a lot less clunk and the game overall is just pretty fun in this department. The anime variety is great. The boss fights, even though they are a few disappointing ones, are still fantastic. And overall, the gameplay itself is fantastic as well. Looking back at Dark Souls 3, I am glad this was my first Souls-like game. I'm not by any means saying that this is the greatest Souls-like game from From Software. It's definitely not as good as something like Bloodborne or Elden Ring, and in some cases it is weaker in some areas than Dark Souls 1. But it's a great entry to the Souls-like franchise, especially from the perspective of it being way easier. At least, for me it was. There's also a lot more polish, and it is way less clunkier than Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 1, which I think is a very big contribution to this game's overall quality. Now that's not me saying that Dark Souls 1 is bad because it's more clunky, it's just that some of that clunkiness can become frustration. And I definitely think if Dark Souls 1 was my first game, I would have hated it way more than I actually do. Anyway, getting to the point of this video. Is Dark Souls 3 worth playing in the year 2024, 8 years after it first released? Well, I would say absolutely yes. Sure, it's not the greatest in the franchise, sure it's not the best Souls-like game from From Software, but it's still a fantastic game, and a whole lot of fun. So yeah, Dark Souls 3, still awesome in 2024. That is it for this video. I thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.